Greetings. So glad you could join us for the May edition of The Place to Be Oshkosh. I'm your host, John Neiman. I'm the Director of Programs for Oshkosh Cots. Uh, thank you once again for joining us. It is May, so it's a wonderful time. Everything is new again. It's spring. Plants are sprouting. Everyone's happy with the weather. So thank you again for joining us. I have to start with my sponsors who make this show possible. So our supporting sponsor is Cots Transitional Housing Program. We appreciate their support of this program, this community program. And also Karen and the Oshkosh Herald, which is our local community newspaper. It has so much information, good information and pictures and things to get you to know our community. Also, our set design is from Brian at Ubloom on Witzel. This is May, so people remember Mother's Day and planting time. So see Brian, he has outdoor plants, he has indoor plants, he has decor. He's very, very community minded. So um, thank you, Brian, for our wonderful set design. Where can you see us? Well, you can see us right here on Life TV, Spectrum Channel 2, if you have Spectrum. You also can go to YouTube and just put Oshkosh Media in, and my show will pop up, The Place to be Oshkosh, as well as other shows by Oshkosh Media. Also, you can download the app for Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV. So plenty of opportunities to see this wonderful show that talks about our community and what's going on. Uh, last month, I introduced you to something that was going on with the Frankie Mascata Foundation. Um, Frankie uh, is a wonderful singer, local talent. Um, her passion is to stop bullying in our community. And her tagline is, be kind. And she's also um, trying to educate about teen suicide and awareness and education. So she does have something going on right now, and it's a shoe drive. And it's called Shoes for Sunshine. Uh, so for 24 countries such as, such as Ghana and Haiti, she's collecting shoes. It will end the middle of May, and all those shoes then will be donated to uh, those countries. So it's a wonderful way for everyone to give back. Everybody likes to do spring cleaning, or if they don't like to do it, their wife says they like to do spring cleaning. So it's a chance for you to take your old shoes uh, or even buy new shoes and give them back and it goes to a good, a good cause. So again, that's Frankie Mascata and her foundation. And this is the Shoes for uh, Sunshine Project. Uh, there it is. Check her office out downtown Main Street. Really wonderful. And she is going to have an event in May um, at Rev's Bowl where they will be collecting all of the shoes and she'll be performing also. And remember, she was on American Idol. So our, our very own from Oshkosh, Frankie Mascata. Also wanted to talk a little about COTS. Um, I talked a little about uh, what we do. We're transitional housing in Oshkosh. Um, as of April of this year, we've been in Oshkosh for a year, our men's program. Very excited. We're doing remodeling on our second floor so we can add 10 more rooms to help uh, with housing. And we also have our women's program on Harrison Street. Volunteer opportunities at COTS. Uh, we have something called the Meal Ministry, where we have groups or individuals who will bring food items or full meals um, to our program to donate all of our residents to do work, and that way they can come home and have a nice hot meal. It's also May. You're thinking about gardening. Uh, we also could use people who want to come and weed, plant flower gardens. We'd also like to plant a vegetable garden this year too. So if you're interested in any of that, please contact me. Um, my email is at the screen at the end of the show. So is my um, telephone. Contact me at COTS and we can get you hooked up with um, some great volunteering. That's it for my first segment. We're gonna take a quick commercial break, break and then we'll be back for our second segment of our May edition of The Place to Be Oshkosh. Hi, welcome back. This is the May edition of The Place to Be Oshkosh. 
wonderful program that we have set for you. We have two wonderful guests here today, Nicole and Brandon, who are going to introduce themselves. Tell us about their role um, in this organization and what does CVMA stand for? <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Brandon Kronberg. Um, my road name is Crash Bar. I am the road captain for uh, uh, CVMA 45-3. Uh, CVMA stands for Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association. Um, yeah. I'm Nicole Spangberg. I'm an auxiliary member of the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association. Um, what we are is an association of combat veterans who simply exist to support and protect other veterans. Um, our motto is Vets Helping Vets, and that's exactly what we do. So lots of different charities that we support, lots of different organizations, and we have lots of different events to be able to do that. So we are a nonprofit organization ourselves, and okay. we help support other veteran organizations as well. Okay. I, I can't help but I had a look at Crash Bar's vest. <laughs> so it's Crash Bar and Bubbles. I okay. am Bubbles, yes. Okay, how? How, how, did, you get, how did you get the name? Um, I recently had foot surgery in December, <laughs> and as you know, I was in the boot for a while, and then I um, got out of the boot, and things were going well until I uh, snapped my calf muscle and got back in the boot. So at our state meeting in Wisconsin Dells, the chapter presented me with a roll of bubble wrap, and they wrapped me in it. <laughs> um, and so they then changed my existing road name to Bubbles. And so, so Scott, we're now going to go to the videotape of Nicole being wrapped in the bubbles. <laughs> we got it. No. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. I didn't know that one about you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And Crash Bar? <laughs> uh, I, I got mine from uh, I T-boned the backhoe. <laughs> on, on the bike. On the motorcycle. Yeah. I was on the motorcycle. I T-boned the backhoe. I somehow miraculously walked away. I was n not, was not injured at all, or then sore muscles the next day. So. Oh my gosh! Yep. Yeah, he turned. It was his fault. He turned left in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. And so then the chapter decided to rename me Crash Bar. That's cool. Yeah. That so. is. So tell me. I know how you got involved in this. Yes. Because of your husband. Yes. How did you get involved in this, and how long? Um, I've been in for. Oh my gosh little over a year, okay. almost two years. Um, my husband is a combat veteran. He deployed to Iraq. Um, and he was just struggling with finding a place and a group and the camaraderie that he had while he was in the military. He was in for 20 years, retired um, from the Army National Guard. So uh, with the loss of his brother and his best friend within a year of each other, um, we, he was just looking for a place to be. And we we stumbled across the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association and it was home immediately. And so me being the spouse of my husband, um, I was able to join the auxiliary, which is the spouses. Um, and we have our own little stuff that we do uh, to help support our veterans. So. And you crash? Well, I got, uh, I joined back in, it was three years ago actually, uh, January of 2020. Uh, which is a very interesting year to join. I went to the Christmas oh, yeah. party, and then there was no more meetings <laughs> yeah. for, for a very long time. <laughs> so I didn't really get a chance to meet anybody till later on that year. But um, my reason for joining was uh, when my biological mother was murdered, um, I couldn't afford to fly out to Virginia for the, uh, for the funeral. And the chapter, uh, this, this local chapter, paid all of my bills for the month to ensure that I had the money to go and buy a plane ticket so I could fly out for the funeral. Wow. And that's, and I've been an avid motorcycle rider for many years and okay. that's when I decided that I wanted to give back to the to this chapter and give back to other veterans because that really hit home. That is, that is amazing, that, yeah. what, what a story. So, is part of this that you have to have a motorcycle to be part of this group? Yes, you do. Okay. Yep, and the motorcycle has to be 500 cc's or larger. Okay, I was just going to ask what kind of motorcycle. <laughs> Doesn't okay. matter what kind of motorcycle. I, I ride a Triumph, but okay. the majority of people ride Harley. I mean, we are from Wisconsin. Yep. So. <laughs> yep. um, but, it, yeah, there's a few other people who have, you know, there's some Indians in there. and um, a couple, I think there's one guy who rides a crotch rocket still. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so what do you, do you guys get together to ride? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. That's actually my job. I, uh, <laughs> as the road captain, my job is to put together rides where we, uh, 
we are able to interact with each other or interact with the community and whatever event we're doing, then my job is to make sure that the ride is safe and I put together a safety briefing and, and, and plan the route and then we go out and have a good time. So it's kind of therapy. Yes, then. it's very therapeutic. So the pictures that we're, we're seeing on the screen now have been you guys, is that just, is that part of the, the event that we're going to talk about or is that just going out and riding? These photos are from our event last year. We had the ride for the 22. That was something that my husband Jacob planned um, as soon as we joined. He wanted to plan a ride specifically to honor his brother who took his own life um, in 2020 and was also a veteran. Um, so he wanted to ride for the 22, which is the statistic 22 veterans a day commit suicide and take their own life. That's one veteran every 65 minutes. So was that the first ride then? That was the first ride. Yes, okay. and after the success of last year's ride, we decided that we wanted to do this annually and honor more and more veterans and their families and bring more awareness to veteran suicide, and especially within our area. So um, it was renamed the Veteran Suicide Awareness Ride, and we're moving forward with, with that this year as well. So, and I, and I have to say, because I'm born and raised in Oshkosh, and as we were talking about before, I do the commentary for the parade, the 4th of July parade. It's a big parade, the military put on the parade. Mm -hmm. But you don't really hear much about suicide no. with veterans. Is it because it's a stigma? Or because you hear about, like even in our parade, our 4th of July parade, it's put on by the Vietnam vets who mm -hmm. did not get that great of a reception when they get home, got home besides everything else. And that group is dwindling in numbers. but. It, it's really sad and is it just the pressure of coming back and then being not having a support system or what is yeah that's 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 a lot of it um, I yeah you, you you come back you you go from being deployed where you worry about yourself and then those around you right and you know okay. that your comrades have your back um, and then you get home and now you have to deal with the, some of the stuff that you may have done, and, and some of the stuff is unmentionable, right? And it's stuff that you would hope that no human would ever have to do. But, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you did your job, you came home, but then now how do you deal with that, right? You don't, you don't think you can rely on your family because they have no idea. Mm -hmm. They see you struggling, but they, they don't know how to help you. And if you get out of the military and you lose touch with your your fellow soldiers, um, then you, you kind of lose that camaraderie and you know, and that support system, and and that's where the CVMA comes in play. Is we all we've all been there. That's part of it. You have to be a combat veteran to get into it, which oh. makes which does make sense. And and in my previous life, I was a chaplain in a hospital, and I would talk to veterans, but they would clam up because now I see the point. They want to talk to somebody who's been through the same thing mm -hmm. that they have been through and it's easier to talk to someone about that. So I applaud what you guys are doing. I read, I read everything and I think it's simply amazing the work that you're doing and the awareness that you're bringing like the 22 per day. That to me is just sad. Yeah, it's a huge number, unfortunately. And so the ride, let's talk about the ride then. The reason you're on now, yes. I know it's the month of May, and the ride is in July. Correct. But we want to get as much word out there about your organization, what you do. Thank you, Scott or Jake, with our crew. <laughs> you just say it and it's on the screen. So that's a really cool poster, really cool flyer. So yes. the, the date of the ride is July 22nd. You want to talk about the specifics of the ride? Um, yeah, July 22nd. Um, we're going to be 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning at the Wrightstown Urban Cluster American Legion Post 436. Um, that will be our registration. So everybody can come on in and get registered for the ride. It's $20 per person, $10 per rider. Um, breakfast will be available for purchase. The American Legion Post is going to put on uh, cool. a breakfast for sale for us so that everybody can eat before the day starts. I'm assuming we'll probably have a safety briefing. Yes, we will definitely have a safety so who briefing. Can, who can ride in this? Anybody, anybody. Anybody with a motorcycle. So anybody with a motorcycle can be part of your group for a day? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> and I believe last year, too, we had a few cars for non-motorcycle riders as well. I know uh, my family, we honored my brother-in-law last yep. year, and, and we're the only ones in the family who ride motorcycles. So I do believe a few of them took their cars and followed behind the group as well, just to kind of feel, feel part of it. Um, but I'm sure that would be welcome as well. Okay. Um, but we welcome one and all 
um, anybody who wants to come and bring awareness to this ride is fantastic. So do you pre-register or you register that day? You can register that day. Um, our flyer did have a QR code on it to pre-register as well if that's the option. That now, you Nicole, you know you're talking to me and it's going right over. <laughs> <laughs> you know at work it goes right yeah. over my head. The QR code is that yes. funny little square yeah. thing with the dots in it. <laughs> uh, you can scan that with a QR scanner from your cell phone. Okay. And it'll pull you right to our event right She'll page. be showing that to me on Monday at work and I'll do it. I will. Okay. Um, so that would be wonderful. Our main stop is going to be at the Damn Yankees Watering Hole in Hortonville. Yep. Um, and there we're going to have, we have a couple different organizations that are going to come um, to set up some tables with some resources based around mental health and suicide awareness. So right now we have Prevent Suicide Fox Cities, Old Glory Honor Flight, Mission 22, Wounded Warriors United of Wisconsin, Dogs to Dog Tags, Project Healing Waters, and we are still reaching out to a few more organizations to come and share their resources That's, with us I as well. I think that is really cool too, especially the Old Glory Honor Flight, which mm -hmm. helps all of those older veterans mm -hmm. who are passing away. It helps them get, get to see the monuments in their honor. Also, um, the Wounded Warriors, mm -hmm. what a great one, great one that is to have too. Yes. So what's the dog, t the tag, the dog tag? One? Dogs to dog tags? Yes. They're an organization that um, donates, I believe, service dogs to yes. veterans in Oh, need. cool. Are they going to have service dogs there? Most, they did last year. So usually they, they bring a family. That is dogs. really cool. Yep. Okay. <laughs> they also provide training um, if veterans have dogs that they want training for. Um, they will also do free training for those animals as well. Okay. They're very, very cool people. We've done a lot with that. So how many riders did you have last year? We didn't have a working motorcycle last year, so we actually, <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were only at the, uh, the main stop. Um, oh. I don't know how many riders we actually had on the road. Uh, I don't, I can't recall. I think it was somewhere between 70 and 80. Oh my God. Which is fairly large for a first So then ride. you as the road captain, do you have to like organize with the police and everything that you're coming down the road and all that, or are you just? Uh, no, we have a... Um, we have kind of like a, an SOP or a standard operating procedure that we follow okay. where um, after planning the route, we do have road guards. Uh, certain intersections we're allowed to block. There are ones that we are not allowed to block. So if it's a controlled intersection, we can't stop traffic there. Okay. Um, a lot of times what I've noticed is people kind of give have the courtesy, right? They see a large motorcycle group coming through. They just stop. Yeah, <laughs> so... <yes. laughs> um, so, but yeah, so my, my responsibility is to make sure that the route is planned and that you know, all of our bases are covered so that the ride is as safe as possible. Because we, we want, my job is to make sure that all of the riders, whether you're part of the CVMA or not, are safe within our group. Okay. So then you're riding to Hortonville. Then what happens at Hortonville besides uh, the, the speakers and the, the information you have? We will have the family present. So this year we're honoring the family of Senior Airman Chad Shulak. So his family will be present um, to speak some words about him. He's up there on the screen now. Um, and yes. Um, and we also have someone who creates memorial videos. So um, we will show that video about Chad. It'll include some pictures and some speaking points um, about him as well. We did that last year for um, Matthew Spangenberg as well, which can be found on our Facebook event page. We did post the video from last year, and we'll be doing something similar okay. for Chad's family. So how did you choose him? I believe his mother works with our chapter commander um, at the VA okay. in uh, Green Bay. Um, I th yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, unfortunately, too many of us have options of families to honor. Mm -hmm. Um, which, so I, which I was thinking of, the too, decision because is you all know so many people, and you're all part difficult. of this group that yeah. you're, you're doing a tremendous thing, and you're trying to bring the awareness, which I think is really, really good, but then you have the sad fact of 22 per day, which... Right. Yeah, it's definitely a, a tearjerker of an event, mm -hmm. um, but that's the point, is we want to bring the reality of the statistic to life for people mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. they understand what really is going on. Right. So do you want to talk about your husband or at all, or no? Or should we just talk about you? <laughs> <laughs> so he's part of this group. Yes. And you said he was how long in the uh, guard? Twenty years. Twenty years. Yes. So he retired. Gosh, five or six years now. Okay. Because I was going on, I was going on the site. It was fascinating to go on the site. Mm -hmm. So he's he's the chaplain. 
Yes, he's the chapter chaplain and now the secretary as well. So a couple wow. different duties okay. going on there for him. So what does he do as, as the chaplain? As the chaplain, he really just gives support to any members who need a little extra. So he will, if somebody's just having a rough time, he'll reach out to them instead of waiting for them to ask for help. He'll reach out and see how they're doing, see if he can offer any support or advice or you know, point anybody in the way of any resources, okay. um, organize help for anybody who may need it, just a little above and okay. beyond, and just to be there for them. So how big is your organization, like member-wise? We are in all 50 states, and we do have a few chapters overseas as you well. You do? Yes. Okay. So and how often, how often does your local chapter meet? Once a month. Once a month. You do? Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the average attendance? Is it? Is it the auxiliary members with? Yep, auxiliary members meet with the, the full members. Uh, that's our monthly meeting. We meet on the third Saturday of every month. Yeah, um, it's really whoever can make it, you know, shows up and, and we talk business for a while and then we, we hang out and just catch up with everybody and, and hopefully as the weather gets even warmer, we'll go on more rides together. And yes. Okay. So how do you raise funds for what you're doing? Like the memorial, all of this has to cost money. It does. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It does. Uh, we have a, we have a few events that we uh, we participate every year. Uh, Pearly Gates um, up in Green Bay, they put on an event, and so we do security for them. Oh, really? Um, yep. That's their veterans okay. event every year. Yeah. Anybody who has the name Crash Bar, I would be scared of. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got me right. You got me right there. Okay. He's not that scary. <laughs> I'm not scary no. at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we do. Uh, it, we just, we, we take, I guess we have people who donate, um, have donated some funds to us in the past, and then uh, we do our, I guess, essentially fundraising. Um, yeah, I we, mean, that's we do raffles. Raffle, and, yep. And like last year we raffled off a four-wheeler. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We hosted our, our region four rally up in Green Bay last year. Our chapter was the host chapter. So, yeah, we raffled off a four-wheeler. We did a cash raffle. Yep. Um, and then all of those funds just go right back into to giving okay. to veterans. So, so if, if someone in our audience wants more information on your group, mm -hmm. who do they contact? Um, either one of us. Yep. I, our information is yep. part of the show, so that would be the easiest. We can <laughs> okay. direct then from there who So then who if, they're looking, to. if they're looking to donate something to, they could contact you, whether it's um, monetary funds or anything Absolutely. like that. They could. Because what a worthy cause. Now, so Nicole's information is on the screen. I also have to say, Nicole is, we were joking before, she's a co-worker. We both, we both do work for, yes. for Cods Riverview Gardens. And um, her enthusiasm about this is, she started talking one day just about it, and it caught my attention. That's why they're on the show, is, is because it's very unique, and I never heard of it mm -hmm. before. And I think it's a great organization. I'm so glad that I know Bubbles. <laughs> I, oh, I won't bring that. I won't bring that nickname back back to work unless you wear the vest there. Oh, anything else you want to talk about? With we're, 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 our time is winding down, but what else? What's why are you so passionate about this? Um, I mean, it hits home for me. Very, my my husband lost his brother to veteran suicide. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that impacts you in a way that you just can't describe and. It has changed the family dynamics and everything around that. And I just, you know, the more we can talk about it, the less people we lose mm -hmm. and the more family members we gain. So I just love having a bigger family and friends to be able to hang out with and, and support my husband mm -hmm. who really needs it because at the end of the day, I can't do all of that. I don't know what he's been through, where he's been with some right. of these things. And for him to have that extra support system is just amazing mm -hmm. for me. And that's what keeps me motivated to continue working with the organization as well. Cool. And what about you? Um, I, I absolutely love the camaraderie. It reminds me a little bit of uh, being in the military. Um, we all, obviously we're all civilians now, but, um, and, it, it hits home with me too. Uh, I did have a an NCO while I was in who took his own life. Um, so, it's uh, it's it's a it's a tough subject, but it, it we need to have awareness on it and we need to bring it to light. And okay. it's definitely gotten better over the years. Mm -hmm. It's come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I would think that the motorcycles make it a little more fun. 
makes it fun, and, and the, the motorcycles are actually uh, very therapeutic for a lot of us. Um, okay. It's uh, Some people find listening to music or playing music is their way of dealing with their stresses. For me, uh, it's it's riding the motorcycle. I can As soon as I start that motorcycle up and put my leg over it, whatever, I could have been having the worst day in the world within, within five to ten minutes, I just don't care anymore. Okay. <laughs> It just relaxes me. So let's go back, recap the event for us that's happening in July. All right. Let's go. July 22nd, um, the Wrightstown American Legion, post 436. Um, come between 10, uh, 8 and 10 a.m. and we will we'll get the registration done, we'll do our safety briefing, and we'll be on the road. And so this is open to anybody who has a motorcycle. Yep. They can come and join. At, which I think would be very powerful, mm -hmm. you know, for people to join with Harleys and Triumphs, to join together yeah. for a ride on a beautiful day, because I, I guarantee you the weather will be really cool that yes, day. Yes, we're hoping so, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Just but, rain or shine, we ride, though. Yes. And then I, I found some, so the money's raised, where's that going to go? We haven't chosen a charity yet, um, but last year all of the proceeds from the ride went to Prevent Suicide Fox City, so we will be choosing a similar organization um, just to keep the funds dedicated towards the cause. So you're, so you're, you're doing this for fellowship, camaraderie, mm -hmm. but then the monies are going to go back into our community to, yes. help, to help people. Yes, absolutely. So maybe this is a dumb question, even though I tell people there are no dumb questions, but <laughs> does the VA do much to help with, with suicide and, and depression and all that? They or can they do better? Uh, they do. Uh, they actually do a lot. I had a very, very good counselor through the VA when okay. I was dealing with uh, my with all my stuff, um, and I felt like they did very well. Okay. Um, and it, I guess it's just like anything out there. You know, they have their good, the good things and their bad things about mm -hmm. them. But um, overall, I've I've been very happy with their okay. um, with how they react to it now. Because we have some, as Nicole knows, we have some veterans who stay at COTS. Mm -hmm. Some don't want to talk about anything. Some want nothing to do with the VA. Mm -hmm. So I can see all the struggles that they have. If they don't have anyone to talk to and they're not getting any help through the VA, where, where can they go? You know, and at least you're providing right. help for that. And like Frankie Moscata was is doing something for the teens yes. in suicide. You are doing something for those who, who served our country or still serve our country. And we need to, to know more about it and to do more about it. So I think what you're doing is, is really cool. It's, it's a neat thing. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of the event yes. going on too. So, and honoring someone. Mm -hmm. I bet you that's gonna be very meaningful for the family yes. that's there too. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And we will have members of the previous family who was honored um, at the ride each year so that they can almost build their own support group amongst oh. the different families and be there for each other. So Because they would only know the experience together as mothers, sons, uncles, yes. that they could talk about what's mm -hmm. going on. Yep. That is cool. And I can see this growing and growing, especially because you're very enthusiastic about it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Sure. Yes. And you have a bike this year that we you're going to ride. We do have a bike this year. <laughs> you're going to ride. You bet. Absolutely. <laughs> well, th thank you guys very much for being on the show. There's a lot more that we could talk about, but the time... Yes. But time is winding down. So thank you also for uh, watching our May edition of The Place to Be Oshkosh. If you want more information on our guests and their program and the ride, which is coming up in July, you can contact me. My information is at the end of the show. So our Brandon and Nicole's information at the end of the show. But um, it's a serious topic, and they're trying to do something to help people in need. So um, please go to their Facebook page also to get more to get more information on this. Thank you very much. I'm glad that you could be here for our May edition and have a good day.